Hi, uh, thank you very much for having this opportunity to present my, uh, a part of my PhD research here. It's still a work in progress, so um, I would be very grateful for any feedback to improve my work. Um, so um, this question is uh, one of uh, central questions of uh, my, my PhD research, and um, it might sound trivial, but um, for me it's very puzzling. Uh, because, I mean, open data research is uh, quite, quite young, quite novel. But I think if we uh, look at the, at the quick pace um, at which government um, have adopted um, open data initiative and published open data uh, from a perspective of political science, uh, then, then this, this quick pace is quite puzzling. Um, because um, we, we do have a lot of evidence and that there's a lot, there's a quite long tradition uh, in research um, in government transparency or uh, information exchange within, within the governments. And uh, from, from what we know, we know that the governments, they actually uh, don't like um, uh, to share information that much. They don't like to share it uh, that much with citizens. They don't like to share it with journalists. But sometimes, uh, surprisingly, maybe to some, maybe not to others, uh, they don't like to share it uh, also with fellow uh, government agencies, right? And uh, so for me, this was um, th th this 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 was very puzzling. So so how come uh, we know that the government they they resist? transparency uh, by default, right? And they still um, adopt these open data programs um, at quite um, rapid pace worldwide. So um, this is, yeah, this is just one example. I mean, I don't have to go through, uh, through all of them. Uh, but this, um, uh, this is what the uh, New York uh, Times journalists uh, got in response uh, to their freedom of information request uh, addressed to FBI. I think it was in 2010. So uh, it was exactly in that, um, um, in that time uh, when the open, open government and data agenda was uh, kind of a top priority. Um, and uh, what you can see, well, so that's, that's the left, I mean, on the left, that's what they got, um, um, so not much. And um, on the right, what you can see uh, is uh, what they finally got when they sued uh, FBI and the, the court uh, concluded that this information had been withheld from them unlawfully, uh, so they ordered uh, FBI to uh, release this much information. So um, this is just to illustrate that um, we do have, I mean, this is just uh, anecdotal evidence, but we do have a lot of research that suggests that government resists transparency, right? Um, and, um, yeah, that's another one. Yet, they, they do endorse open data policies. Um, they, uh, they, they build open data portals worldwide. Um, these are um, on national and local level. That's why there are so many. And um, they, um, they commit um, to, um, to increase uh, transparency, to increase access to uh, government data and information even more. Um, here we can see uh, this is from the uh, Open Government Partnership uh, national, action, uh, national Action Plans and sixth of uh, all the commitments is open data related. Uh, so that's quite a lot if we think like how broad open government agenda is. Um, so um, Based on uh, literature in um, on democratic uh, theory and um, political uh, competition and uh, policy convergence and innovation, uh, I uh, formulated this hypothesis, and uh, I assume uh, that governments might um, adopt open data policies and might publish uh, open data um, with these very genuine interests, that they really do want to uh, improve uh, democracy, that they believe that by uh, increasing um, access to government information, that they would just widen uh, possibilities um, um, for citizens uh, to participate. Um, but I, I argue that if this is the case, then what we would observe would be that um, they would also make sure that there are other um, more robust information policies in place, like freedom of information, that um, they would um, um, make sure 
that, uh, they, that they would create environment where uh, media could operate uh, freely uh, and in pluralistic environment. Uh, they would also uh, take measures uh, to have independent judiciary, uh, to have independent prosecutors, um, and um, they would also have measures to support civil civil society. So, um, based on this hypothesis, what I would expect that um, the the open data availability would be uh, higher in countries that that kind of meet all these conditions, and that would be the case that they 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 actually follow this this goal. Um, then there might be there might be other case. I mean, there they, there might work simultaneously. But um, uh, the other case might be that they just don't care that much about all um, democratic stuff. They, they don't care that much about improving democracy, but they might just uh, want to create uh, new services, um, um, new, yeah, they, they might just want to foster innovation and economic growth. And um, um, there's um, another one uh, which I won't go into details here. It's, uh, I, I, I don't test it here, but... Um, I think they may also use it to win elections. Um, mostly they may use it in electoral campaigns uh, if uh, um, the, the incumbents um, had some, um, some big, big corruption scandal, so they want to distinguish themselves uh, from them, so that would be on the top of their agenda. Or also then, if incumbents think that they might not be able to win elections, that they would push for this agenda to secure, um, secure access to, uh, to government information uh, in case of electoral laws. And um, the last hypothesis I, I propose is uh, that they just might, uh, the government might just want to confirm that they just follow uh, the crowd in a way that um, it's, okay, it's on the top of the agenda, it's uh, kind of like promoted by many important international actors, so it's good for reputation uh, to be part of it. So, um, so as I said, I tested three of these hypotheses, and um, probably um, I, I should tell you a bit about um, the measures. So, um, so here, um, I, as a measure of a um, of uh, state of uh, political uh, rights and civil li liberties, I used uh, uh, Freedom House score. Um, then um, I used also um, some some measures of uh, judicial accountability and how uh, difficult or easy it is uh, to um, to establish a civil society organization in a country. Uh, these are the measures by the varieties of uh, democracy and. Um, I'm thinking what else I included. Yeah, and I also looked um, whether the country has freedom of information legislation or not. And, um, and then um, the, the, sorry, the economic growth uh, was measured as a GDP per capita. And then I also looked at the, um, uh, at, at the how, how innovative, well, what, what, what's the potential to innovate in a country based on uh, how many days you need to register an established uh, business in a country. And um, so, sorry, uh, where are we? And um, the last hypothesis where, where I looked um, at the case of policy convergence, uh, so I looked mostly um, how all these influential international players uh, have on open data availability in uh, different countries like worldwide. I did this uh, cross-country comparison. And so I looked whether a country is a member of uh, OECD or not, uh, whether uh, is a member of open government partnership or commonwealth. And I also uh, looked uh, at whether a country has... Um, chapter of uh, Open Knowledge International or whether they have a chapter of Transparency International, as I believe that this might have uh, quite uh, a significant effect on open data availability in these countries. And um, before I get to the results, <clears throat> I uh, probably, well, if someone asked me uh, what what would I need for this research? Uh, for me, that would definitely be a very good, stable and rigorous measure of uh, open data availability because we do have quite many. We do have, I mean, these are probably those that are most, most well known. Um, so we have uh, four here. Uh, the first one is um, 
uh, on the right right corner that's um, open data inventory by open data watch um, there um, I observed that the definition of open data is a bit more lax than um, thank you then uh, for open knowledge, open data index, and uh, World Wide Web Foundation um, open data barometer. Uh, so I excluded that one. Um, and um, there is um, on the right, uh, down right corner, um, there you can see that's OECD, our data index. Um, that might be problematic for cross-country comparison as it uh, um, covers only um, a small number of countries. So I'm mostly working with uh, Open Data Barometer and uh, uh, Open Data Index. Uh, however, these two, they also have um, their, their good sides and bad sides. And, um, sorry. And so for instance, um, this is Open Data Barometer. Um, and in it started in 2013, so we, we already have data for four years. And in 2013, we can see, well, there's a problem with representativeness because the coverage, uh, if, if, you, if you look, well, in Africa, it's uh, kind of like white spot there. There, there are not many countries that, uh, that had been assessed in 2013. And then uh, there's no, no, no country um, represented from Central and Eastern Europe. And although this this has imp although this has improved quite significantly, um, still um, there are many countries that are just not assessed um, in Open Data Barometer. Um, with uh, Open Data Index, there is a problem with uh, comparability. Uh, they do change their methodology uh, quite. Uh, they, they have changed their methodology uh, quite significantly last year, and also. Um, uh, during um, these four years um, we have data for, there have been slight changes every year. So it's very hard to, um, to compare uh, the data from year to year, and it translates uh, into different scores that are difficult. Um, yeah, um, that you need to know the methodology quite well to, to understand like why, why one country jumped up or went really down. So for instance, like for UK, for election data sets, um, at the beginning, it wasn't necessary to have the data at the polling station level. Now it is, and I mean, the, the, the change for UK was huge. And there are many, well, not many, but there are a few, um, few problems uh, like this. Um, and it's very difficult then to, to use these data in a, in a comparison over years. So, um, so yeah, so if I wish something that would be not, not four, not six, not seven open data indices, but maybe one that would be really robust, stable, and um, yeah, and I, yeah, we could use it. Um, so, um, two results. So I know this is awful regression table, I know that's, that's not very useful, uh, but just to give you an idea, I do have some graphs there as well to, for, for you to see it better visually. Uh, but um, if we, well, each of these hypotheses, uh, we can find support for, for each of them um, to some extent. So uh, for instance, um, if we look at the open data availability um, measured as uh, open data barometer, so, um, what affected that significantly was uh, freedom, uh, the, the, the state of uh, political rights and civil liberties. Uh, also, that's actually uh, common also with uh, open data availability measured as um, open data index. Um, and uh, it is also uh, GDP per capita. And um, then for open data availability measured as open data barometers, it's also membership uh, in OGP and OECD. And uh, for open data index, it's uh, membership in Open Knowledge International. So what, what does it tell us? Um, so indeed, uh, countries that are freer um, do have uh, higher open data availability. So the freer the country is, the, the higher open data availability. The richer the country is, uh, the higher open data availability. And um, the, the effects, for instance, for the membership in OGP and OECD uh, w w were, were quite big. So being a member of OGP or OECD um, 
all these countries have significantly higher open data, open data availability. Um, and as I said, um, so you can see that, um, well, the number, the number of observation, it's only 110 and 120. 20, I, can't, I can't read that. It. It's small. Sorry for that. So, um, so yeah, it would be it would be great if we had a measure of uh, open data availability that uh, would cover uh, that would have greater geographical coverage. Um, and just to show it visually, so it looks nicer and uh, maybe more comprehensive. <coughs> sorry. Uh, so this is just the data for um, open data availability measured um, as a subscore of open data barometers only on the data set availability. And you can, you can clearly see that um, um, the relationship uh, between freedoms, uh, between the state of civil, civil liberties and open data availability um, the, the freer the country, the, the greater greater open data availability. So uh, it, it has effect. Also, if you look at the freedom of information, uh, so for the countries um, that have freedom of information, you can see it as the, as the best performers um, in open data availability. You do ha we do have some outliers. And um, the size of the, of the points uh, suggest how rich the country is. So how, how, how big is the GDP per capita? And you can clearly see again that, as I said, there are some outliers, but the trend is that uh, the richer the country, uh, the, the, the better, um, um, the greater open data availability. And um, that's also for uh, members of OGP, uh, which here um, um, they are represented by a triangle. So you can see that uh, countries that are members of OGP uh, do better in open data uh, than uh, non-members. And um, this is pretty much the, the, the same. So, I mean, what you see, it's pretty much the same, uh, just, uh, uh, just uh, differently visualized. So again, uh, here you have a um, um, relationship um, between uh, economic growth and open data availability. And again, you can clearly see that the richer country, the better open data availability. And uh, what I think is important uh, to look also at these outliers. Um, and uh, so here, what you can see on, on, this, on this figure is actual, um, it's actual scores. Um, for open data availability measured by open data barometer. And you can see what would be um, the predicted, uh, predicted score. Um, and you can clearly see that there are some outliers. For instance, Brazil, Mexico, Rwanda, and also UK are doing much better than, than predicted. And um, the outlier on the, on the other end is Sierra Leone, which is doing much worse. Uh, than predicted, and I think it's it's very important to ask ask questions. What what does it mean to have this good open data availability in Rwanda, for example, uh, where the internet penetration is clearly low? It's like uh, probably like 40, 50 percent. Uh, so so what goals is government following uh, by by opening data set? Is it just to innovate, to bring new services? Do they also, uh, along the way, strengthen some civil liberties? Um, and also, I, I think it's important to ask, like, what what sort of implications? Uh, for instance, like mi mimicking mimicking open data portals and poli policies have. So, for instance, maybe there's one one example I can. I can use uh, to conclude, and it's uh, Moldova. So Moldova is an uh, OGP member, uh, which uh, jumped very up um, in, in the score um, of uh, Open Data Barometer. And you would think that's good. Um, so maybe the fact that they are joining all these, all these uh, international platforms, that, that's a good thing, right? Um, but then 
there, there has, I mean, there has been evidence um, by by Israeli political scientists who uh, looked um, in into detail, like what's going on there, and what they found out that um, they that there's no there's no action whatsoever during the year on the open data portals. And what they did was publish these data sets um, just a few days before the visit of uh, World Bank. So I think we need to ask this question: What does it what does it mean? What what implications um, this mimicking? Um, of uh, open data portals, just kind of copy pasting solutions from one country to, a, to other uh, mean. And also, I think the important question is like, what problems do governments want to solve with publishing data sets? And yeah, that's probably with what I would like to conclude. Thank you.